A new fashion collection from Ralph Lauren draws on the archives and yearbooks of Morehouse and Spelman Colleges from the 1920s through the 1950s. Vladimir Dutier gives us an inside look at the inspiration behind this collection. I have always believed in the American dream. For over 50 years, Ralph Lauren's line of clothing has celebrated elegance and style with a romanticized vision of America. Now, its latest chapter of Americana, perhaps overdue, is a collection inspired by the archives of two historically black colleges and universities, featuring an all-black production team and models from Spelman and Morehouse colleges. Previously, you know, the way that we showed collegiate style to the world was really through uh, a white Ivy League lens. Alumni Dara Douglas and James Jeter were behind that collaboration. They drew inspiration from the clothing worn by students attending HBCUs throughout the decades. This was a love letter to Spelman and Morehouse. It was also a love letter to all HBCUs. But it was really more about putting a spotlight on the incredible style of individuals at these HBCUs in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. This wasn't black style, this wasn't white style, it was American style. Jeter conceived the idea following the events of summer 2020. In the wake of George Floyd's murder, you were questioning whether or not you even wanted to stay here, even though you'd spent your entire career, Ralph Lauren. Absolutely. And, you know, I think a lot of brands made commitments in 2020, Ralph Lauren included, uh, but 2021, it's really about doing the actual work. None of my heroes looked like me, and I said that to Ralph. And Jeter says Lauren listened. Though the label historically included black models like Naomi Campbell and Tyson Beckford when other campaigns lagged on diversity, through the ages, Ralph Lauren has been seen as the paragon of Ivy League prep, elite society, and some have even said waspiness. But its creator was none of those things. He was a Jewish kid from the Bronx. When Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lipschitz, started this company, he was an outsider himself. Exactly. Ralph didn't grow up as a part of the Ivy League school, so he made that world for himself. And he, he, he built a dream. What do you say to people who will say, well, yeah, there's an opportunity to make some money here? And it's so much bigger than, again, the, the money. I think it's about a little girl walking by a billboard and seeing herself up in the sky. How important is it to see yourself represented in these spaces? It's profoundly important. Professor David Wall Rice was in the campaign. He says Jeter's vision included an open dialogue about complex issues. Some historians who've said, well, this clothing that the brand represents is clothing that black people have had to wear to occupy white spaces. And if anything, this might be a way to simply make money. I think that's fair. Now, one of the things that I would say is that as we're talking about how it is that black folks show up in the world, there's no singular way of doing that. In suggesting how it is that black folk have to wear clothes to do a certain thing, I think that that divorces us from agency. Wall Rice says black Americans have spent 400 years adapting and finding ways to navigate the American cultural landscape. I'm thinking now of, of Du Bois' classic uh, note and construct of double consciousness, where there is the black cultural um, and there is also the American cultural. And in many times, they're at loggerheads. These were some of the clothes that we built America in. We also picked cotton. And so we had clothing for that as well. And I think that this collaboration was an effort of realizing us doing things more boldly, more fully, and telling, you know, more accurate stories. And James Jeter says there are more chapters ahead. And so this is just the beginning. Ralph has told so many stories over the last 54 years, but has so many stories to tell. Vladimir Dutier, CBS News, New York.